Hey guys, uh, welcome back. In this video, I, I want to mainly talk about uh, uh, the DMRS config type. Okay, uh, so so I want to talk about uh, DMRS config configuration type one and two. Okay, so related to this concept, mainly I will talk about uh, how does the subcarriers mapped uh, in these two cases. Okay. And what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? So basically, it's like what is the difference between config one and config two? Uh, this also could be asked in uh, the interviews. Okay, uh, and uh, this is uh, mainly required uh, uh, for us uh, in the upcoming uh, uh, in the upcoming uh, concepts. So, so uh, I want to cover it here. Uh, so basically, uh, I will talk about uh, the concepts uh, in the uplink, which is a PUSH. Okay. So we will try to see the spec uh, where uh, these uh, things are defined. So let me open uh, for this. Uh, we have to open uh, 38.211. Okay, 5G spec. I will be opening. Okay, so this is the spec uh, uh, related to 5G. Uh, I have just opened. You can see uh, here that 38.211. Okay. So in this, uh, I mainly have gone to the section, uplink section. You can see there are lots of sections. Okay, let me minimize. So in this, mainly I have opened uplink se section, and in that, uh, I have come to physical signals. Okay, physical signals here because this is a reference signal. Mm, you know, PVCH and all these things are channels, so that will come under here. Uh, Six point four. I have to go. Then, if you see there, there is a DMRS. Okay, for PVSH, this is what uh, I made. So I have gone here. So there is a sequence. Okay, let me go here. Okay. So this is the physical signal, reference signal, demodulation, uh, you know, reference signal for PVSH. Uh, in this section, mainly it talks about the sequence generation. Okay, R of N will be the sequence sequence generation using this uh, C in it um, as the uh, yeah, initialized uh, pseudo random sequence. Uh, I will not go through the details, okay? But uh, on high level, whatever is required, I will let you know. Because even spec reading is also very difficult, so we have to go through some shared tech note or uh, or some other material, or, or even uh, this particular channel in order to uh, decode the things uh, quickly. So this is the case when the sequence generation uh, will be done uh, during uh, transform decoding is enabled. Okay. So I will quickly move on to the part where we are going to see mapping to physical resources. This is like how you are going to map your DMRS to the subcarriers um, in config type 1 and config type 2. Okay. Again here comes the two cases. One is when the transform decoding is enabled and one transform decoding is uh, sorry enabled and this is not enabled. Okay. So mainly we will look into not enabled case uh, which is the majority of the cases. Uh, so this is the equation this equation we need to decode okay i will not go through all the complete details of this but uh, you know if you see here there's a configuration type one and a configuration type two okay this is the one which we're gonna look so this k always represents subcarrier index uh, l represents uh, you know ofdm symbol index okay this is n is the number of uh, you know sample index um, so here you, you are seeing red R. So R is our sequence generation. What about WF, WL? Uh, WF is a OCC, orthogonal cover code in the frequency. F is fre F corresponds to frequency. WT corresponds to OCC in the time domain. So this one, okay. This is the difference. Uh, just remember this delta and all. Okay. Uh, now. We need to actually. I, I have not gone through the details. If you you know go through the description over here, it will tell uh, where do we get the values of uh, delta and all, and it refers to this particular table. Okay, I am directly jumping to that table. Yeah, we got this table. So this is the one which we're gonna talk about. Uh, uh, you know, in today's video, one is configuration type one, configuration type two. If you see here the delta okay is zero and uh, we have got two different ports p tilde correspond to uh, different uh, logical ports okay these are the ports we have got eight ports here now 
I will directly show. Okay, uh, you can go through this uh, in uh, more detail, and you can try to decode how the things are actually, uh, you know, how things are actually uh, coming out. But uh, I will just directly show in the Excel sheet on how these things are mapped. So especially delta is zero means it it should start from the first uh, subcarrier itself. So, so let me go back to my, you know, mapping sheet. Yeah. So here, so this entire thing, okay. Uh, if you see here, I have considered 14 symbols, and uh, in the frequency, this is a frequency, okay. Uh, frequency, I have considered just 12 RES. This is RES, or you can say subcarriers, right? So I have just considered 12 subcarriers for the sake of simplicity for our understanding. But uh, you know, as you know, there could be um, many subcarriers, or as you know, we for 100 megahertz we have 273. PRPs which you have to multiply by 12 because each PRP contains 12 subcarriers so you will get you will have these many subcarriers all right so OFDM in one particular slot you will have 14 symbols that's what I have considered this is nothing but what OFDM grid okay or we can say uh, you know this is uh, um, OFDM grid for one particular slot so now uh, let us consider that as per the spec okay so let me go through the spec once again okay so there is uh, there is one more aspect that is you know uh, i will i will come to the concept of mapping type a mapping, mapping type a in the um, future videos but uh, for now let's say just mapping type a here we had considered 14 okay 14 is the number of uh, psa symbols for 14 symbols uh, let me consider position 2 which means Additional DMRS position is 2. We have 2 additional DMRS here apart from the default DMRS, one default DMRS. So L0711. Okay, I will consider that as the mapping. Okay. Okay, here I have given the notation uh, DMRS and data. First, I will take the DMRS. So, first, uh, uh, what configuration I will take? So I had considered pos2 which means that L0711 okay L0 I will consider 2 for now okay it can be 2 or 3 but uh, I will just consider 2 all right so 2 means it will be here so delta we had seen 0 right so it will start from here and uh, and uh, first I am talking about configuration type 1 okay so how this will be mapped it will be mapped in this way if you go through those equations which are shown in the spec you know on alternate uh, um, subcarriers you will have the data like this okay so in the equation what happens so this data corresponds to the beginning if the data is equal to 1 it has to start uh, from uh, you know first uh, subcarrier not zero subcarrier first subcarrier So where is the equation in the equation if you see configuration type 1 you can work it out you will get to know that there is a 2k okay so which means that uh, um, you know you will actually have alternate alternate RS. you will have dmrs in the alternate RS. this is how it looks like okay so this is about configuration type 1 so now what about configuration type 2 okay uh, again you can go through that so i am writing here for the sake of simplicity it will be something like this okay then sorry okay it will be like this that um, you know year two year two will be vacant and uh, you know it will occupy like this okay here total six rs are occupied here only four rs are occupied uh, so so this is the difference okay this is how this will be uh, you know mapped uh, to your OFDM grid for configuration type 1 and type 2 but uh, now we need to understand why you know why this is done and why there are different type of config index that is the uh, important drugs or uh, you know uh, the topic or uh, the concept which we need to understand see what happens okay what i will do is i will take okay um, here i will take 
DMRS2. So DMRS2, let us say this is for UV number 2. Okay. So in case of <coughs> multi-user MIMO, um, as we know that the UVs are orthogonal in the spatial domain, but uh, they will occupy the same time frequency resource. So if they are occupying, occupying same time frequency resource, then even it needs the space for DMRS, right? So that is when you know for UV number 2, if uh, the same resources are occupied, uh, they would be made to occupy on the vacant RDs like this. Okay, so this is uh, one way, but uh, uh, there is another way that is using uh, what you call as um, orthogonal cover code in the frequency domain. I was showing about the WF right in the spec. So using that also we can use in which case uh, you know this uh, UV2 will be overlapped with UV1's DMRS. Okay, uh, but uh, both of them will be orthogonal using a orthogonal cover code that I will try to cover in the actually I had already covered these these concepts uh, in my chance estimation related to frequency domain OCC and all uh, you can go ahead and check it actually uh, but um, but uh, I will try to see if I can try to if I want to cover uh, you know the um, if I want to cover uh, OCC, okay, OCC time domain OCC and frequency domain OCC, and then I will I will cover uh, there. So now you got it, right? But in this case, uh, what happens if you are going for multi-user MIMO, right? So in this case, you as you are seeing, out of twelve RAs, uh, you know six is occupied one UV, six is another occupied by another UV. So total two UVs are there, and uh, as I was telling, then we can use an orthogonal cover code then finally you can have right two orthogonal cover codes uh, one on uh, you know e1 rs 0 2 4 e1 rs and uh, another one on odd rs so you can have cover code okay so total uh, two two uvs uh, into two occ so we will get uh, four okay four uvs can be used for uh, multi-user MIMO uh, in, in this same time frequency resource all right um, so this one um, I will just get into the spec also for uh, your understanding so if you go back to that table right then we can see here in the configuration type 1 okay so if, if you can see port 0 and uh, you know port 2 port 0 and port 2 if you see delta is equal to 0 delta is equal to 1 so they are occupying alternate arrays but what about port 0 and port 1 0 0 which means that both the both the both the ports are on the same arrays both the, uh, are overlapping in which case if you come here okay frequency domain wf is frequency domain occ if you come here you will see that you know plus 1 plus 1 but plus 1 minus 1 so you're able to see so the k0 is first sub carrier this uh, k dash is second sub carrier so for uh, port 0 both of them are 1 1 whereas for port uh, 1 it is 1 and minus 1 so 1 1 and 1 minus 1 are orthogonal to each other orthogonal vectors so this can be used as a frequency domain OCC I think you want it like that you can try to decode the other aspects as well I will try to come uh, about time to OCC and all in the upcoming videos. So now let us get to the configuration type 2. Then why do, why do we need configuration type 2? So configuration type 2, um, see, this is just giving, uh, you know, flexibility to 4 UVs, right? Then what about uh, configuration type 2? If you want to support more number of UVs in, in, in the multi-user MIMO, then, then we need more ports, right? More space. So that is when this config type 2 comes into picture. As you can see, uh, you know, this is one okay so the second uv can be occupied here so then we can also have third uv okay so third uv will be occupied like this so finally we have uh, in these arrays finally we have three uvs and uh, each of them can have two two occ as we had seen so finally here six uvs are possible okay to to be in multi user mimo
I think uh, you got the concept and you found the difference between config type one and config type two. Uh, so, so uh, I will try to uh, cover many other aspects related to this uh, in the upcoming videos. For now, I will uh, uh, stop it here. Uh, if you're looking for more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye.